afternoon or good morning everybody my name is marco frank i'm the uh, trade manager for visit flanders the tourist office of flanders and brussels welcome to our webinar our webinar today will feature cycling in flanders First of all, let me just uh, give you a, a very brief overview of uh, where Flanders is. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that a few times. Flanders is basically the northern region of uh, Belgium. Uh, you see here a map, unfortunately, uh, for whatever reason, the map doesn't really come out very clearly, um, but uh, you see there's a little bit of a yellow area on the map, so that is Flanders, then a, a darker area area is Bologna. We got in the we got France, West um, part uh, the channel we got A and then in the eastern part uh, Germany. There are six uh, the country, which is uh, Brussels. Then we got the port city of Antwerp. Uh, then the uh, historic uh, which is actually the between and Bruges. Uh, the uh, city of so those are the six major cities. What are the four core product lines that we have to offer? The four core product lines are gastronomy, art and architecture, fashion and cycling. And today I will focus primarily on cycling. But before I dive into all the details, all the fun about cycling, I would like to uh, cover some other aspects of the other product lines as well. So in gastronomy, I just wanted to remind everyone, I'm sure you've heard about that before, what uh, Flanders and Belgium in particular is known for is that there's beer, fries, waffles, but those are just some uh, uh, high uh, products uh, product fall under the gastronomy experience also high end our restaurant uh, in particular the highest number of per one star restaurant in uh, Europe when it comes to architecture there's a lot a word heart for example brute about uh, some of the famous names that come to mind in fashion there's uh, a lot of high end fashion uh going on uh, fashion designers that came out of the Academy uh, in the last 20 or 30 a lot of uh, unique designers and shops. Again, this is just a very quick round reminder of the other product lines that we have. But today we're not here to talk about uh, astronomy, the art and art, the fashion. Today we're actually here to talk about and then last but not least, what's important for us is that Flanders has a reputation for cutting out craftsmanship. What we mean by that is basically products are by the people who care about your experience. They're worried about what they're doing. It's not, so to speak, a uh, table of mass market experience where you just like 
people in and then you're out. That everybody can have. So let's focus on cycling. That's day. So first we've put on extra pounds, the weights, because we've all those great chocolates and waffles and fries. And now it's basically time more active to cycle because that is the activity sports in Flanders. And versus just being there and looking at the day's destination as an outsider, now we're actively part of the destination. We're actually uh, getting on a bike and really uh, getting out there. And as you can see or will see, Flanders is really like an international cycling region par excellence. And what I mean by that is it really has a wide spectrum of different cycling offers. First of all, it is uh, an all-around cycling vacation that can be offered for the average cyclist. If you like the flat countryside, the tranquility of Flanders with its national parks, the woods, the rolling here, hills, the canals and rivers. It's really easy to cycle along the countryside. There are great bike paths available. It's flat, it's easy, it's something for the old, it's something for the young, it's for the whole family for multi-generational travel that's really excellent. So it's for the leisurely cyclist, Relax, kick back, enjoy the countryside, uh, maybe stop for a beer, stop for chocolate, get back on a bike, bicycle, and then again, continue on. On the other hand, if you're a little bit more into uh, the professional cycling, if you like to work out on a regular basis, uh, it's also a great destination, a great region for professional cyclists, semi-amateur, semi-professional cyclists. What Flanders is really known for is some great bike races. Uh, you can climb what we call the mystical bergs, so which are the hills, the mountains. I mean, they're not really like mountains like in Switzerland, but, but hills and, and cobblestones. So they're world famous for, for those bike races. And you as a tourist or your, your clients as a professional, semi-professional, as a more serious, more advanced cycle, can also experience those unique uh, regions and races and tracks and streets and cobblestones. So again, it's one the whole spectrum amateur leash to the professional. Just like the uh, in Flanders, they do share real like the enthusiastic cycling. So a picture here. Go to work on a cycle. They go shopping on on a bicycle. Uh, they go to university, they just do everything on bicycle. And the city are really built to a bicycle scale. What do we mean by that is everything is really like easy to reach. Uh, they're bike friendly cities, it's easy to get around. It's not, there's you know, super high. And it's really uh, firmly embedded in the everyday life, as that people really use that uh, also as a main means of transportation. It's easy to take a bike on a train. If you have longer list, uh, distances to go, then you just take the bicycle on the train, and then you bike wherever you need to go in your destination city, and then again, you take the bike on the train, and you go home. And there's even special facilities just for routes that we have in Flanders. First of all, there's the so-called Cycling Knot Network. Look at the sign that we have here on the right-hand side, and you will see it's a green sign. And on top of there, you'll see a number two. And then you see an 86 pointing to the right, and a 12. To get to 86, you want to have to go right. If you want to go to 12, you go left. 
Now, how did the whole numbering system come about? It basically was invented by a mining engineer in the early 90s. And uh, he worked uh, on the ground and, as I said, was a mining engineer. And he was a little bit frustrated with the fact how all the different cycling routes actually worked at that time. So he figured, you know what, wait a minute, I think we can actually improve on that. We can actually make this a lot better. And he came up with a system that, that we're actually using on the ground. Because on the ground, and then just create like little stretches of a cycling path and then we just all give them a number it's very easy for them to navigate around and then people just need to remember the numbers so beforehand before they go on the tour they will basically be able to look at the map they will go online uh, just choose their own route and then all they need to do is remember the number and I can show you on the next slide. Um, um, actually, uh, before we get into that, uh, I'll get to, uh, on the next map here. Uh, what the long uh, you want it to be. It has the distance measured from from knot point to knot point, and then create your own little cycling tour. And all you need to do is basically remember the number that that's all there is just a number and then you don't need to remember any cities if you need to turn left if you need to turn right you just write down the number let me just quickly go back so the whole cycling knot network system by the cycling knot network and it's a little bit more than 12,000 kilometers long and it has really like a lot of high quality routes and all of the routes have those signposts and then again as I said it's really easy to get around and the cyclists can really In addition to there's also themed loops of it. So what do we actually mean by themed loops? By themed loops are actually those routes actually theme. Could for example be deer, architect, Ruben, Raffles. So there's different there. Let's go on a uh, route that has a beer theme. The cycling route then would take you then to different breweries, different pubs, uh, different venues and places that all feature beer. And again, because the country is small, um, and it's of Connecticut. So again, it's very small, very easy to get around. So you can then really experience all those different themes. Or you can do a theme that is um, about architecture. And again, the cycling route takes you to different famous buildings, different sites. Uh, or you focus on, on classic painters um, like Rubens. And again, you're taken to different sites. So it's really easy to navigate around. There's a lot of easy routes avail available, suitable for beginners. Also, if you if you want to do a long cycle uh, that is themed, there's also some available for more advanced. Last but not least, we also do have the long distance cycling routes of it. Plus six is, for example, those. Uh, cycling route and a total of 10 of those sites available. Uh, overall, for a distance of about 1,500 kilometers. So if you just do the average, if you do around 1,500 kilometers,
out that is uh, available for the cyclists. Again, something that you quickly do in, in half an hour and just quickly get, or even just in an uh, you know, 150 kilometers. There's a little bit more of a serious thing, uh, undertaking, uh, but I just wanted to highlight one of it, which is the LF1 North Sea Cycle Route which uh, basically goes along the north. Share it, the rejuvenate, you can cycle on the beaches as well. Again, it's a great pleasure and, and great cycling out. Bicycle-friendly accommodation. Of course, the whole network, the whole routes are only part of the game. You need additional infrastructure to support the whole cycling experience. And uh, one of the additional pieces of infrastructure that we have available are bicycle-friendly accommodations. What does that mean is basically Flanders has over 400 hotels, bed and breakfast places, campsites, youth hostels, and so-called tourism for all centers, which are all labeled bicycle friendly. So what do we, do we actually mean by that label? So bicycle friendly accommodation is really uh, tailored to the specific needs of the cycling tourist. Uh, they're situated maximum within five kilometers uh, from the official cycling route. So they're very close and you don't have to cycle another 10, 20, 30 kilometers to get to those sites. Uh, they do offer special services for the cyclists, such, for example, as a secure bicycle shed, because if you stay there overnight, you want to make sure that the bicycle is, is locked up, it's secured, it's safe, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, they also offer bicycle repair kits, so just in case there's anything wrong with your bike, you can actually repair it there, you can fix up your bike. Um, worst case scenario, if you need a new bicycle, there's also bicycle hires available. And last but not uh, least, they also do offer maps so that you can actually then plan your next route, your next tour, and it's really easy to plan those when you have those maps. Also, I wanted to mention, not on this is also certain uh, operators do um, advance up. So if you have a bigger luggage that you're hauling around because you are on your bicycle, uh, you want the luggage uh, to be left behind. Uh, vans available that follow you the long distance cycling and then we uh, have your suitcases and all your additional gear um, made available. Bicycle race. Um, now we're getting into a little bit more of the uh, professional aspect of bicycle racing. There is uh, one uh, very, very, very famous bike race available in Flanders called the Tour de Flanders, uh, which is a very uh, internationally uh, renowned bicycle race that happens every year in spring. And it's, number one, a great spectator sport. I'm not sure if any of your clients or yourself are into professional bicycle racing because you really have to be a professional bicycle racer to participate. But then again, it's a great spectator sport. Uh, and it, it's fun to watch. You know, you're out there, you're cheering the bicycle riders. Uh, it's a road race, and it's really fantastic to follow along. Great atmosphere, a great spectator sport. Uh, in addition to that, there's also uh, cycling museums that have been uh, created uh, for the uh, Tour de Flanders, uh, which are actually at the destination spot, and where you can really relive the history of uh, the, the bicycle race and then have a great, great experience and can relive the history. A unique visit to the centers that launch into the whole sphere uh, of the races. 
And if you're daring, uh, inside the museum, signposted stars, and uh, you can actually um, cycle of the track, not during the race, and after the race, and then see how you compare to the professional cyclists. Um, again, this is something very unique that you can actually route that the professional uh, cyclists take as well. Uh, here's just one last idea. If you're then done at the end of the day with your sporty trip, of course, you combine it with a beer, a refreshing beer, like a post-ride beer at the Brasserie de Flandrian. And again, it's a great experience, a great way to combine different aspects of all our products that we have. Again, the cycling just doesn't stand there all by itself alone. You can really, as I said, when you remember, think back about the theme cycling loops, combine it with all of the other different uh, cycling and product line experiences. What other cycling-related activities do we have to offer? As I said, there's the uh, possibilities to, to visit uh, the cycling museum. And the one that I just mentioned, uh, the uh, Centrum Ronde from Flandern, or the Tour of Flanders, uh, that was just built at the uh, destination, is, is a great museum to start. Uh, we have other museums for and we move, or mystery uh, uh, of places and cycling race. Thing and we really, are uh, presenting
interesting stories. I have an exclusive list of Canadian-based uh, tour operators, uh, but I know, uh, based on my personal experience, that a number of them actually do sell into Canada, and their website is actually a very good uh, starting. In addition, I also do have um, just a little uh, that has addresses for the uh, tour operator can also uh, make available if need to be. Okay, and we do have a question from Bonnie. Do you offer reasonable accommodations on the different themed bike routes? Yes, there, there are different accommodations available. Uh, to then, you know, more mid-level type of hotels. So the range of, of different uh, hotels and overnight accommodation possibilities is, is, is given. I mean, naturally speaking, you will probably not find five-star hotels along those cycling. So we're definitely talking about reasonably mid predations that are available along those themed uh, cycling uh, routes. Great. Now it does seem is typing. If anybody else has any questions, oh, here comes Marcel with a question. So again, if anybody has any, feel free to write in. I'm sure we've got Marco for a little while longer and he can answer a few questions. Taking the time to go uh, and for joining us on the webinar today. So. Bonnie would like to ask, Canadians would also like to have excursions in Normandy. Is that a possibility? Uh, again, uh, Europe is um, small in that part that it's relatively easy to go to Normandy. Of course, Normandy is France, uh, which is a country, and, uh, but it's relatively easy there. Um, definitely to go there see specifically uh, um, I know based also on uh, and, and living in Canada that uh, world war experiences is very important uh, to Canadians but also I wanted to that um, present in the mind of Canadians nowadays uh, is very much um, also a possibility, a very, very interesting place to visit. We do have a lot of uh, activities going on over the next four years to commemorate World War I. Uh, there's, uh, again, uh, visitor centers there. Uh, we have uh, special websites uh, to commemorate Flanders Fields, uh, the centenary of, of World War I. And um, also, if you are in Canada, then you will see probably a lot of activities um, in the next four years where the uh, Visit Flanders office is actually teaming up with uh, different Canadian organizations. Uh, for example, right now we are working on an exhibition in the War Museum in Ottawa. Uh, there is an exhibit that will open up. Flanders Fields, and again, pay tribute to uh, the Canadian uh, contribution in World War I. Uh, again, I encourage you, uh, I guess, maybe just check out uh, our website or just keep it in mind. There are a lot of World War I related activities. And then again, just to uh, come back to the original questions, yes, there is ways to, to, to get to Normandy. It is a, a little bit of, of, of a stretch to get there, but again, it, it's not too, too super far away. Uh, but then again, uh, there's some great possibilities, Flanders Fields, the, the poppy. Now, does anybody else have any questions? If not, I would like to thank Marco very much for taking the time to speak to us. Oh, Dina, <laughs> it seems as though Dina is typing. Uh, so once again, if there are no further questions, I'd like to thank Marco for taking the time to speak to us today.
Um, and thank you for joining us. Um, it has been a pleasure to host you, and we hope to see you again in November. All right. Thank you so much. And just an FYI for everybody, we will be sending out a, record, a link to the recording of the webinar, so if you missed anything, don't worry. Um, you can contact me directly. That's Tabitha. I'm the one that sent the RSVPs. Uh, we will also be sending out Marco's contact information. So if there's a question that you have that you think about in five minutes' time, feel free.